Hey, my name is Jeff Fielder, and I've been a working musician in Seattle, in the Seattle area, for uh, 20 some odd years now. Mm -hmm. um, countless projects, lots of stuff, but maybe most notably with Mark Lanigan and the Mark Lanigan Band, also with Isabel Campbell and Mark Lanigan back in uh, 2010, 2011. Uh, <clears throat> and then I played with Duff McKagan on the It's So Easy. Uh, there was a movie involved with that, so that was something kind of like a concert film. Uh, I played with Sarah Cahoon for years and years and years, since the beginning of that. Uh, and then Wayne Horvitz, the late Sean Smith, a dear friend of mine. Uh, my wife, Tecla Waterfield, very involved in her music currently. Uh, played with Star Anna, made a few records with her. I haven't seen Star in a while. Um, get to play with Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam on, on uh, Starry Nights. And so I've been very fortunate <clears throat> to meet. And my favorite thing about playing music is uh, the people I get to meet and play with. And sometimes they happen to be my heroes. So, um, Well, it's my home. And music is my thing. So uh, it, it can be all-encompassing for sure. Um, Seattle's kind of a small town, uh, and the more you're in it, and the more the, you're kind of in the music scene and whatnot, uh, you can, in my experience, you can kind of meet everybody and work with, you know, so many different people, uh, because it's pretty tight-knit, uh, is, you know, in, in, in comparison to maybe L.A. or Nashville, uh, with relatively tight-knit community and there's a lot of crossover from the jazz scene to the rock scene to the folk songwriter scene and all that kind of thing and I've been very lucky to kind of traverse all of those uh, and so it means <clears throat> it means the world it really does and um, you know I've been lucky enough to make the bulk of my career for the last at least half a decade uh, touring kind of outside of Seattle you know uh, all over the place everywhere you can imagine um, but um, having Seattle as my home base is very important to me. There's a certain rebellion to the art here, a certain individualism uh, that is, uh, is very unique, I think, in the country and in the world also. Um, and I think that people that follow the things, not just what happened in the 90s, but what happened in the 60s, what's happening now, it's very, uh, it's very its own thing. And it's, you know, I, I have never taken that for granted. Uh, we have uh, a very cool community here, so I've always appreciated <clears throat> what Seattle brings, and uh, it means a lot to me. Because of our situation, uh, this is recorded in 2020, um, what, uh, what work I lost, or what's been postponed, and what gigs, uh, everything. My whole life got canceled around the end of February, early March, um, along with everybody else that's doing what I do, you know what I mean, and doing all kinds of other stuff. Uh, I was kind of early to realize that um, before I even heard about any cancellations. I was, I, I pre was pretty sure that this was going to go down like this. Uh, and then sure enough, <clears throat> um, so, you know, countless gigs on an average year for the last nine years or so, I'll probably play 250 shows. And that's including sessions and, and just performances in general. But, you know, that's kind of just what I do. Even when I'm not doing it, I'm doing it. You know what I mean? And so I was slated to go on tour with the Indigo Girls this summer, which was going to be great. Uh, um, they're my dear friends of mine, and uh, I was honored to get to, you know, get the ass to do it. Within those gigs with some really good ones, uh, even this week we were starting this last week, uh, the beginning of May, uh, the Ryman Auditorium, it was a big dream of mine. We were playing that around the 5th. Uh, we were gonna do Tiny Desk in DC. That's a cool one, you know. Uh, and then I still play with Mark Lanigan. Um, you know, we had a, we've, had a, we've had a nice long uh, career together. <laughs> But we're good, man. And uh, so we were going to do Red Rocks this year, opening for Abbott Brothers. That was a good one. So that not happening, you know. Um, 
And you, uh, you know. So at first, what, as far as that impacting my life, you know, financially, I guess it says here, how did it affect you financially? It was, I wouldn't go so far as to call it devastating because, you know, uh, me and my wife are pretty resourceful and, um, you know, I'm always pretty confident that we can find a way. Um, that said, all of both of our work was completely gone, all within the, the, a couple of days, you know, and it takes a long time to carve out any sort of, um, you know, career in this business. And I've spent most of my adult life uh, doing so. And so to see it just all kind of just evaporate within a few hours was, you know, that was interesting. Um, but, you know, the other part of me is like, you know, for the greater good and whatnot, I'm all, I'm all for it. You know, I mean, you know, you got to do things in life that are, are uncomfortable. And we, we've been, uh, you know, sent this challenge uh, for whatever reasons or no reasons or whatever it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can either lie down or you can, you know, try to figure it out, try to figure out how to move forward. And so that's what we're doing. But, yeah, it was, it was a bummer for sure. Uh, we're doing okay. Um, maybe that's another question later down the line here, but, um, you know, we've decided to kind of really try to th think forward about what this is going to mean. Nobody really knows, but, um, touring isn't going to be a thing for a long time. I don't think, you know, and even when it is, it's going to be so different than what we're used to that I don't know. I just don't know. So, you know, as of right now, I'm lucky enough to, to, uh, and this goes into the next question, which is, uh, uh, what are you doing musically during the stay at home order order? So, uh, I spent the last few years, um, maybe three years or so getting my chops together as far as recording. And, uh, you know, because it just kept on coming up, you know, to play on people's records and things like that. And at first it was just a thing where it's like, I need to be able to record guitar parts, you know, and then as that went, and I'm a curious fella, and you know, I just got well into it. <clears throat> and luckily so, because here we are, stuck in this place, and I got all this stuff, so I can, you know, do remote sessions, and I've learned to do it, you know, reasonably well, you know, so I can send pretty clean guitar tracks, and people appreciate that on whatever level, and uh, so I'm very happy for that. And then, um, also, uh, uh, my wife, Tekla, and I, um, you know, we're trying to, you know, we figure, like, it, it, I don't know if it's the future, but as far as right now, um, the online, you know, streaming concerts, any sort of online musical content, you know, I figure that's what we're working with, so we might as well try to do it, try to do it good, and so, you know, we're trying to put out some pretty interesting things at the very least. I want it to sound a certain way, you know, um, that kind of thing. So, you know, that's been interesting. Uh, uh, luckily enough, you know, we have the means to, to make some cool sound recordings. And as far as vid video editing, I'm trying to get my game together there. You know, that's a whole thing. We're just working with iMovie on this laptop back here, but you know, it's kind of amazing what you could pull together. I think, you know, hours and hours but it keeps your mind off, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, so that's good. So we've been keeping very busy, uh, very, very busy. Um, and then every once in a while, we'll just have to uh, let it all sink in and, uh, you know, take the weekend off. Uh, well, if I had a message, <laughs> I don't know if anybody would listen to me, but, uh, you know, Seattle's very resourceful and very creative and the people here are very smart and very fiery, and, um, you know, uh, I've already seen some amazing things, you know, coming out of here, uh, commentary, you know, art as commentary, um, artists really pushing envelopes and, and, and finding cool ways to express themselves, and, um, you know, it, I tend to think that, you know, we could Seattle could definitely take the lead on certain things here as far as being a voice in the artistic community, being very, you know, 
thoughtful and 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 I don't know. I think it's from what I've seen so far, it, it seems really cool, and so it's it's quite inspiring in a lot of ways. So um, I'm happy to see that, and uh, I just want everybody to you know be cool while we're trying to figure it all out because you know it's all about people are experimenting with how to how to express themselves you know and um, you know I think it's great I love seeing it um, and just know that that people are trying to figure this out and it's it's cool to see people doing it and not just sitting around moping you know waiting for the venue to open up because hmm, I don't know I'm hoping but you know we don't know what's gonna happen there um, it's too many to count I can't there's no way you know I'm getting well old, and so this has been my thing the whole time, and so, you know, I've seen and done a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um, but a few that come to mind uh, was Drop, at the, Drop in the Park. I was in, uh, I think I was senior in high school, pretty sure, and then uh, we went there, saw Eddie Vedder hanging from the, you know, the rafter, the light rig. That was, I mean, I thought for sure he was going to eat it. That was amazing. That was a good one. And then my first stage dive at Soundgarden, the Bad Motor Finger Tour uh, at the Paramount. Uh, this is my first stage dive. I stood right next to Chris and jumped off into the audience and everybody split and I hit the floor from the stage, hit the floor. That was brutal, but a good memory. Didn't make the video. Uh, years later, I uh, got to play that same room, the Paramount Theater, opening for Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with Mark, me and Mark uh, Lanigan. Uh, so that was, that was cool. And also me and Mark were the very first act to play at the uh, Neptune Theater when it reopened as a, as a music venue. Uh, it was a movie theater for years and years, and then it was just closed. And then they remodeled it and made it a venue. And we were the very first act. We had a, we had a tour coming up from California, you know, LA, San Francisco, Portland, and then Seattle. It was only four shows. And that last show was in Seattle at the at the Neptune, and they were still pulling the monitors out of the cardboard boxes and all the styrofoam and everything. Uh, it was amazing. And then we got it up right for showtime. Amazing. So, but the very first sound that came out of the, that PA there was was my acoustic guitar. I thought that was cool. Uh, seeing Paul McCartney at the uh, Safeco Field, that was amazing. I didn't even think it was going to be that amazing. It just kind of hit me. And the show was great, but it was more about just like seeing that guy kind of in front of you. I didn't know I was going to react that way. That was really something. Um, and then all the stuff that has happened, you know, there's been so many gigs. But, uh, you know, the tractor was my house for years and years. The triple door was my, you know, I did so many gigs there, you know. And then all the stuff for EMP, Mopop, you know, all the Paul Allen years. And, you know, it's been a lot. So, you know. A lot of, lot of fond, fond memories. Um, and then as far as something to promote, I'm doing stuff all the time. That's my one thing. If I had a problem or Achilles heel, it's promotion. I, I have a hard time with this, even this, you know. So, uh, you know, I do a lot of, sh I, I, I do a lot of stuff. So you can find me on Facebook. I got a, I got an easy Google. I got a pretty good Google, you know. And there's always things, you know. I enjoy playing music with people, and you know, I, I really enjoy producing records and playing on records, and you know, playing shows, whether they be, you know, on these devices now or whatever. But there's plenty going on, so I'm easy to find. So you can you can find me. I'll, I'm going to put out some solo stuff during all this, and just put it up on Bandcamp or however that works. We'll see how that goes. I've already been working on it a little bit. It's, it's kind of weird. So, that'll be fun. And then uh, it says to uh, please say goodbye. So, <laughs> I'll do that. And, um, you know, I don't know, you guys. I don't know what all this is. Or what's it going to mean? I don't think anybody does. Even people that think they do don't know what's going to happen. So, um, you know, just be nice to one another. You know, this is stressful. And I think that... Some people handle this kind of things, not that there's been another thing like this that anybody can remember, but you know, people handle things differently, you know, some better than others, and just people have their own ways. So, you know, 
grain of salt, wide berth, whatever you want to call it. You know, let's let's try to make the best of this and not make it any worse than it needs to be. And that's, you know, that's all I can really say about all that stuff. People are going to do what they're going to do. But if I had anything to say about it, I would just say, just, just, just be nice, okay? I mean, come on. And all my Seattle peeps, miss you guys, huh? All right. Love you lots. Peace.